All right. Hi, everybody. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> say hi. Ooh, nice. Do you have stinky breath today? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Right, go. Go get out of here. See you later. Bye. Oh my gosh, get out of here. Go that way. All right, everybody. Um, so, hey, welcome back. This is day two. Um, computer school, remote learning, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to get back into a bit more of the chemistry stuff today. Um, so you want to be ready for that. Um, when we left, I talked briefly about types of compounds. And you might remember that, you know, the atom, and you can see that up here, is the basic building block of all matter. Everything that's matter in the universe is made of atoms. Most atoms on Earth exist not individually, but part of a compound. And I talked about aluminum briefly. You know, this is pure aluminum um, on the left. But aluminum is almost never found that way. Usually it's found as part of a compound, like aluminum hydroxide, also called bauxite, which is found in this rock, okay? So atoms usually are part of a compound. And those compounds typically, as you see here, are either ionic or covalent, okay? So you want to keep that basic distinction in mind. And what I'd like to do is talk about some differences between ionic and covalent compounds, okay? Uh, and we're going to start by looking at a, a short video. So here it is. On the left, we have table salt, sodium chloride. There it is in the pan on my stove. And on the, on the right, we have table sugar, known as sucrose, um, C12H22O11. And I'm going to turn on the burner under each pot. Okay. Now, a couple of things you want to keep in mind. For something that's an ionic compound, um, the elements present are widely separated on the periodic table, and typically they include a metal. So table salt is sodium chloride, okay? Uh, on this periodic table that you see, sodium is all the way over on the left, and chlorine is over on the right. Sodium, Na, is a non, is a metal, sorry, it's a metal, and chlorine is a non-metal, okay? So ionic compounds typically have that combination. Whereas your covalent compounds like sugar, okay, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, they're close together on the periodic table and there's no metal. Here's carbon, here's oxygen. Hydrogen is all the way over here, but it is considered a non-metal. So your covalent compounds typically are non-metal with no um, yeah, elements that are close together on the table, no metals. Um, that's a covalent compound. Okay. Now, some other things here. Your ionic compounds, like the table salt, typically are solid at room temperature. Covalent compounds can be solid, liquid, or gas. Table sugar at room temperature is solid. Okay. Um, oh wait, who's that in the video? Oh, look at that, there's a visitor. Hey Pete, how you doing? Um, some other thing here, um, ionic compounds typically have very high melting points. Ionic co or covalent compounds like sugar usually have really low melting points. And you're going to see that here in just a moment, okay? Um, and part of the reason there, with ionic compounds, the force between particles is very strong. So covalent compounds have weaker attraction between the particles, and ionic compounds have a stronger attraction. So the result is that ionic compounds tend to have higher melting and boiling points. Covalent compounds have lower melting and boiling points. And yeah, if you look at the video there, you'll see that the sugar is beginning to melt. 
uh, on the stovetop, probably several hundred degrees Celsius. There it is. Melted sugar. It's not water, it's sugar changing to a liquid. And our table salt, just kind of chilling, hanging out, not doing anything. Same heat's on it, stove, you know, stove tops on high. It's just sitting there. So you know, ionic compound, higher melting point. Covalent compounds, much lower melting points, as you can see there. Okay, um, what else is going on here? Let's close a few items. One other thing, conductivity. Ionic compounds typically are very good conductors. So in this video, which is from a lab, um, there's a beaker of table salt in water, salt one basically, and I'm going to stick a conductivity meter into the beaker. On the readout, if the reading is in the thousands of units, it's a conductor. If the reading is below 100 or close to 100, then it does not conduct electricity. So let's take a look. Here's sodium. Here's again salt water. And you can see a reading of 38,000. That's a conductor. Let's find sugar here. So here's the same deal. Um, sugar dissolved in water, and I'm going to put the probe in the beaker. The reading pretty much doesn't change. So sugar dissolved in water does not conduct electricity. So ionic compounds typically are good conductors. Covalent compounds are not conductors. Okay, another thing you want to keep in mind. Um, a few other things that are going on here. Let's bring up this paper again. So with ionic compounds, the smallest particles are ions. And we did talk about this briefly um, before we were out of school. Um, we have cations, meow, positively charged atoms, ions, and anions are atoms with a negative charge. That's what ionic compounds are made of. Covalent compounds are made of molecules. Okay. Um, ionic compounds we call salts. Covalent compounds typically are referred to as molecules. Okay. And I've also talked about how in ionic compounds, atoms transfer electrons. A cation gives them up and an anion takes them. In a covalent compound, the atoms are sharing electrons, not just transferring them. Okay. So these are some basic differences between ionic compounds, all that stuff, and covalent compounds, sorry, all that stuff. Okay. This paper that I'm highlighting is attached to the lesson in Google Classroom. You should take a look at it. Okay. So at this point then, you're going to use what you've seen here and what you've heard, and you're going to attempt to answer the questions in the Google form. Basically, for each compound, you want to tell me if it's ionic or covalent. Okay. All right. I hope that's helpful. Take care, everybody. Um, we'll see you later. All right. Take care.